Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. As you're watching this, I'm probably on vacation. I thought I might give you an update of what to expect when I get back to vacation. Some of these things you may have seen before, I just haven't had enough time to work on all of them. But this will be a little bit of an update video. I can give you a little bit of thoughts on some of the preliminary flying I've been doing. And then you can leave your comments about what you see, what you're excited about, what you're not excited about. Things I might need to look at and uh, we can go forward from there. So let's get down to the desk and take a look. So the first one I have out here is the Driblet. And I've been trying to work this out uh, with super light motors. It's not a necessarily a light frame for a 2 inch setup. Uh, you can see, I, th I believe this is 3 mil carbon so that's pretty thick generally we see two and a half inch carbon and then we've got some metal pieces in here so this this isn't a light setup so I've been experimenting with props and I've you started out using some of these old King Kong 1105 8500 kV pretty high kV but on a real light setup those did perform pretty well it was about a year and a half ago or so but when we were last using those but I thought I'd give them a shot I've got plenty of other motors I could try uh, but these are the ones I've started with so far. And you can see in this stack, it is quite slim. So you're not going to get a Caddx Turtle in there or Run Cam Split. That's oftentimes a question I get. Um, you would have to do something ultra creative, I think, in order to be able to get that in there. I barely had room for a VTX and receiver. You see here on the top, I've got my VTX, which is the ready-made RC Nano Cricket, I believe it's called, on top. And I've ziplocked that antenna. I've also got a piece of foam underneath that and underneath my receiver down there as well I did use the diatone mamba stack on that so that will be coming as I work out motors and props that help it fly for more than about 45 seconds <laughs> uh, this is the diatone GTR 249 n I believe uh, 249 plus NX so this is a two and a half inch frame uh, of course this is the one without HD as well so I'll be testing that out I've already got it bound up I just haven't flown it yet at all so I really don't have any preliminary thoughts other than it seems to be well built you know we've been seeing this canopy design on, on others that they've been bringing out and uh, I did add the buzzer which goes right down here some of you asked me about this buzzer and where you can find the buzzer by itself I don't really know so that's something you're gonna have to research out I'm not a huge fan of how they're wanting us to uh, mount our receivers that seems to really expose a receiver and if you're using an XSR like this because eh, that fits I chose that because it just plugs directly in that's the uh, the lead that they have on there is made for this I'm just not crazy about having it exposed like this, but there's not enough width under here to get it unless you mount it up in this area. Then you might as well mount it behind the camera, but I put my buzzer back there. So I did put it back here. I put some foam underneath it, and I didn't put the zip tie all that taut down because I didn't want to, if it did have an impact, I wanted to have it a little bit of a fighting chance of surviving. Also, these tubes on the side, they are actually designed to where your antennas go up this way. I don't really like that design. It seems seems under thought so I went ahead and routed things back down through here and then I have them on my zip ties angled out that's not ideal either but having them side by side directly out of the top that's not that's far from ideal I also have the gnarly FPV Primo or the 110X version set up and ready to go I did a test hover here in the house but that's about all I can't really tell you too much about it um, when I made the original Primo I uh, I didn't do a very good job I didn't weigh the component and or the frame before I started putting it together so that's on me but what you may find is that I did post in that video a pinned comment to give you a breakdown of an estimate because even when that question came up I already had this built up so I weighed all the electronics then you make a subtraction of the built up weight and then you should get the frame and the 3d printed parts weight so hopefully that and I'll, I'll put uh, put that down in the description of this video as well so those of you that you're wondering about this don't have to go looking but that should be fun to experiment with when I get back as well. Mentioned this previously, but this is the Tomo Quads Carrera. I especially like the blue. So this is a lot like the Primo, just with a little bit different design. Uh, let's bring them both out here for a second. I suspect they're both about the same size. Looks like the Tomo Quads actually may be a little bit smaller. Maybe because the, the canopy design, he was able to bring in the motors a little bit. So. Again, uh, this is a got the Turbo Wing Cyclops V2 camera in it. You haven't seen this yet. I have flown this quite a bit, but you haven't seen it because this camera is so poor when it comes to cloudy light. If you've got clouds, this camera, it's just black. You can barely see and fly, especially in the DVR. You know how the DVR is never as good as the goggles. But with this particular camera and you have cloudy light, and that's what I'm calling it. You can call it whatever you want. We have a bunch of clouds, but it's still daytime. 
you can you just really can't make anything out. So all the flight footage that I have has been in that scenario, and it just hasn't been of use. So I have to wait for a better, more full lit day, or I've got to switch out the camera, which I'm going to do tonight. We'll be seeing this on the channel as I get around to it. It should be coming up fairly shortly after I get back. Now this one is pretty special, at least special to me, because look at the design elements here. The colorization of this 3D print, that's that's pretty something. This was built by Adam Baum. You might know him as Adam Baum Build and Repair Services. And I should have prepared better and I would have his sticker out. His sticker or his logo is pretty interesting. It's like a, a I think of it as a Cabbage Patch Kid that has like an explosion going out behind him. And then I think they have FPV goggles on. I think that's what I saw. And then Maximus FPV... He also has his own logo and design, which is basically just the words Maximus FPV. But he, he has been designing micro frames for, for quite a while. This one's called the Minuteman. Sorry, I haven't gotten around to it. Though, so uh, I'll be flying this. I just received this the other day. Um, Adam built it up for me because, you know, I just haven't had a whole lot of time to do builds. I've got several that I'm waiting to actually get more time flying. Um, but, of course, we've got the Diatone Mini Mama Stack. I believe this is the uh, Unify VTX. And then we've got a fox ear. I believe that's fox ear, isn't it? Isn't that the fox ear logo? Where's it at? Where does it say that? Oh, it's True RC. Excuse me, True RC micro uh, circular polarized antenna or pagoda. I'm not sure which. I need to get a parts list from Adam yet. And then we have these premium uh, rotor X motors, 1408s, 1404s. Excuse me, they're the low profile ones. Where's the KV at? Oh, you can barely see it on there. I don't think I can make it out with my glasses. Hold on. That looks like it says 6500. And it also says V2 on there. Maybe you can see it better than I can. So this will be pretty special. I'm excited to fly this guy. It's a good looker. I'd hate to get it dirty, but you know I'm gonna. This is the Retorius Zoot. Um, you may have seen this in a previous video. I have flown it some. I may have built this one too light. I may have to actually either reduce the idle or reduce the prop size on this because I just can't hardly bring it down. You know, I'm flying under canopy all the time, so I need to be able to get down. I use motor braking to help me with that. But I've got to be able to make those corrections where I can get down. Down is always a problem, it seems like, with these quads that have uh, big motors and large props and are lightweight that you can't get them down out of the air enough. But this has got a Caddx Turtle in it, and I'm pretty excited about this. Many of you have seen this before, so I don't want to go too quickly. Uh, again, this has got the ready-made RC uh, Nano Cricket Nano or Nano Cricket. And then I've got the, the longer Lumineer um, Axie antenna running there. Uh, along the side and I chose to do that because there's no room up top uh, with the extra board for the turtle so we'll see how this turns out I'm hopeful that it'll be good fun and it'll hold up I made the choice of going with the thinner arms because I was trying to build real light I want to build a machine that I can get HD footage and is super acro and fairly powerful but I also don't want it to have a super tall stack I'm kinda picky about that it's one of my hang-ups is I don't like a super tall stack but that'll be coming soon Impulse RC Micro Alien, I believe they call this one. Uh, I've had this for a while and I've flown it some. Um, again, I may swap out the motors. I'm currently using the RCX motors here. As you see there, they're 1306, 6000 kV motors. And they seem fine. I'm just not blown away by them. And I'm always looking for something to blow doors off. Uh, you probably are the same way as I am. Um, because this is built with the sandwich plates inside you can move them outside i think this is one you can move outside maybe you can't let me take a look here real quick no i believe you have to build it this way i, I again i've had this so long I, I have to go back and dig into this a little bit but it's see we've got two plates here you have to build it in there which makes your stack really really tight i really think that's a flaw in this design but they may be keeping with their five inch counterpart so that's why they did things this way i i still think we need the arms below it i know if you bring the prop line closer to your center of your mass with your battery and everything it should fly better but boy it's sure not easy to build in there it's so tight and you're definitely not getting a caddx turtle in there either or a run cam split or a fox ear mix any of those things they're not coming in at all so this may stay in its current form as I get more flying, or I might try different motors as well. And this little guy is by Diatone as well. It's called the GTR 249 HD MK2. What a name, huh? So, of course, this is a 2-incher with a Caddx Turtle inside, and I've actually had this a while. You can see they've raised up the rear of the stack in order to give itself some clearance here for the extra board. Uh, it uses some nice components. You also see the soft mounting up here, but I'm still getting jello out of it. It's not very bad. But it's worse than the Mobile 7. It's worse than the... Well, the Beta 85 HD was actually pretty good. It's worse than just about everything else I've flown. So, 
Um, I'm not sure what Ditone is going to do about that, but I'd be cautious about looking for to pick this one up. I think there's still some work to do either in the tune. I've loosened these up. So I don't know. I've spent some time on this. I'm not very pleased with how it's been coming, and I'm sure they're not either. But they say that there's no Jill, and I'm like, eh, maybe it's the camera. Maybe I just need to replace the camera on here because it seems like uh, there's Jello. And I've worked on the tune outside of their work, so um, not very pleased. And it's kind of heavy for a two incher, so you can't expect long flight times or much agility. This is simply just the AKK diversity receiver. The crazy thing about this is if it works much at all in a diverse way, if the reception is very good, it's $29.99. I don't know what software. I haven't had it plugged in. I haven't even really looked at it. I did look at the manual real quick. I didn't recognize it as running Achilles or any other firmware that I was aware of. So maybe they did something on their own. I suspect I'm going to have to turn it on and see if I can't find an about on here to figure out what it's running under covers. But for 29 bucks, you know, it, it, it surely won't compare to Rapid Fire. It surely won't compare to True D. It surely won't compare to LaForge because all those are dramatically more expensive. But what is probably better than is anything else that's 29 bucks. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe for 50 bucks we can go back to that 5808, that that 5808 Pro. That's uh, it's. I think that one's running Achilles. Worked pretty dang well. So you know if this performs pretty well pretty good value still. I would be hard pressed to find one that's better at that price point, but again, maybe for an extra 30 bucks you can double your reception, but I'll be testing this out and flying this as I get back from wherever I'm going. Uh, this is the Micro Eagle. This is a GearBest product and I have been hesitant about reviewing this. If you aren't aware, GearBest was recently notified by a multitude of security groups that their database with their customer information was not secure. Um, the details of that I did not find when I went digging. I'm sure it's released somewhere. Um, so I have not reviewed this. I have flown it. Uh, it compares a lot to the Skystar's uh, X120 Bolt, which looks just like this, except this one has a little bit of a curve on the front arms. I don't know why they bothered doing that. Uh, but they upgraded the stack to 32-bit. It's also running a, a, a Cadex camera rather than a generic camera, but it's running the same ST1106 motors that are 4500 kV running 4S on this thing, and it flies pretty well. I'm pretty happy with the video, but again, the source is GearBest, and right now I can't advise anyone buy from GearBest until they get that secure their database secured up. Um, so I have continued to look for, uh, there's a press release that I did find, but it didn't go into great details, uh, and I've looked at some few other sources to see what I can find. I have a, I have a suspicion that most of the stuff I've been looking at has been in Chinese, and I can't read that, but I, and the Google Translate doesn't tell me all that much. So be careful about ordering. I'll review this thing when I'm comfortable with it. I've also got a host of motors to test. Uh, let's see. We've got 1106 version 2, 4,500 kVs. Those should be fun. We'll see how hot they run. 1408 is 3,600 kVs. Yeah, I went out and I bought a bunch of motors. I may have more than one set here. Let's see. So we had the 4,500 kVs, and we've also got the 5,200 kVs. These are 1108s, though, so those are slightly different. Make sure I've got all my sets paired up here. Where, 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 1408? Am I missing a 1408? It would appear I am missing a 1408. That's not good. Sure hard to fly a quad with different motors. Hopefully it's still in the box because I don't see it. So we've got 1106, 4500 KV, uh, 1108, 5200 KV, and 1408, 3600 KV. Ah, I found the fourth one. So I'll be doing some motor testing as well. The, it feels like to fly at the current motors before I move on to those. Uh, otherwise, it's just going to be a shot in the dark because it has been a while since I've done some motor testing uh, over the winter. You know, I've been flying a lot inside and then outside has been those vehicles that I need to test inside and outside. So outside flying has been limited. But that's what you'll be seeing on the channel coming up. We'll have all these things and I'll work on them. You know, I don't go very fast. That's one thing about you coming here is that I just don't do a very good job of going fast. I tend to take my time. I like to have fun. I want to enjoy it. I don't want to stress about this stuff. This isn't my job. I go to work Monday through Friday, sometimes Saturday and Sunday too. Take care of the family, do all those things. And then this is what I do as my hobby. I don't 
I don't go out. Um, I don't go play cards with my friends or go to casinos or anything like that. I'm a homebody, and I like to be in my home, and I like to be with my family, so I do this as they're busy doing their own things. Oh, and we got a new shirt on, Tiny Quads. This is another from Mr. Wiggles. Uh, last time I wore a shirt, and I talked about it in a video, I did an exceptionally poor job of making sure the link was in the description. Uh, he was very thankful to me. I did buy these shirts. He didn't give them to me or anything. I thought they were attractive, good-looking shirts. Trying to take back my closet a little bit from my wife. If you guys are like me, if you've got a, a female in your life, you may find that your closet starts to look like all the stuff they want you to wear, not so much what you want to wear. So I'm trying to bring back some of my own flavor into my own closet by buying some quad shirts, like tiny quads here. I do like this one quite a bit. This material is a thinner material, probably more summer or higher temperature appropriate. Uh, although I will say that this uh, this is the classic, I believe. On Redbubble, they have three different materials. There's premium, there's something in the middle, and then there's the classic. And this is the classic. It's a bit thinner, like I said. But it also wears about a size smaller than you might expect. So if you want a medium, I would suggest ordering a large because it will come a little bit smaller. Um, just something to note about that. But I didn't find that with the other materials. The other materials that they had on the Redbubble site, I thought were sized appropriately. So there you go. Oh, also, I should mention, hold on, I got something to show you. So hopefully you can see this, okay? This uh, Mr. Wiggles FPV, he makes these shirts. He's also the official uh, artist for Tiny Whoop. He makes the sticker packs. He sent me a custom print, uh, one of 25, if you can read that down there. Thank you very much. I had no idea that uh, you were going to send me something so special. I have got to uh, find a frame and get this framed up, and maybe we can find somewhere back there to put uh, the Mr. Quad Boy. Does this guy have a name? Does he have a name? Alan. Anyways, thank you very much. Very cool. Uh, I love getting that. And he also sent me a little sticker pack. I'll probably spread the love with the sticker pack because I don't really stickerize anything. And I try to keep stickers out of my kids' hands because then it ends up on the furniture. and then. So very cool. I appreciate it. And I'll be passing these on to the people who come to this channel and win stuff. Speaking of winning stuff, I do have another giveaway planned. I've actually got that stuff lined up behind me. I'll probably record that next. And uh, we got another 10 quads that we're going to give away. Um, we're going to have 10 winners, so one quad per winner. I just got the stuff delivered for our international winners. I'm so sorry it's taken me so long to get that stuff out, but I'll cover that in the winners um, in the, the next giveaway video. Uh, but that's coming up. You should see that within another day or two maybe, and then we'll let that run for a week and I'll be back and we'll take care of all that stuff. So that's what's coming up on the channel. I appreciate your time and thanks for watching.